Welcome everyone. It's a, it's a gray morning here. I don't know about where you are, but it's not going to be a gray warm up, I promise you. I am thrilled to be able to welcome Ms. Ebony Thomas and appreciate very much her contribution here this morning. This I'm sure is going to be a blast. It's really encouraging to see all of you um, continuing to pursue your instrument, your passion, your love. And uh, I really hope that everyone enjoys this session this morning. So welcome. And Ebony, thank you so very much. Thank you so Ethan, much, Lillian. I'll pass this back to you and um, hope that we have uh, that, that there, the participants, I'm sure, are going to walk away with a lot from this. So enjoy, everyone. It's great to see you all. Thank you, Lillian. OK, Ebs, it's all yours. Good morning, everybody. Um, before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much to Lillian and the Burkhardt family for having me. I always, I'm always so curious how people do what they do for warm ups, you know. And even over the pandemic, I tried to like recruit a bunch of friends. I'm like, let's have little warm up sessions. And like, I don't know if I scare people or whatever, but none of them took me up on it. So <laughs> this is my chance. <laughs> um, so today, I'm going to be using several different books. Um, I always like to keep my warm ups fresh and rotate through se several method books um, just so I'm not going on autopilot and just going through the motions. I'm always kind of aware of what I'm doing and playing with a purpose. Um, so this is kind of a sample of what some of my warmups. Um, so I actually, we're, I'll talk about stretching just a little bit briefly because I want to make sure we get to play a lot. Um, but I do a lot of weightlifting. I'm like obsessed with Orange Theory and all things exercise. If you've never done Orange Theory and you have one in your town, I highly recommend it. Um, but it does put a lot of stress on kind of like your forearms and your shoulders and your fingers. So I do a handful of stretches kind of throughout the day. I do them when I'm like at a stoplight, um, just so I don't get any sort of overuse injuries. So let's do a quick stretch. It's gonna be very brief. Feel free to keep stretching while I'm talking and explaining things. Um, but the first thing I do is I stretch my shoulders kind of and my neck at the same time. I'm all about multitasking, um, just cause you know, we're all so super busy and you know, if I had time to warm up alone for three hours a day, I would, but then, you know, you got a six hour opera ahead of you and you know, <laughs> like burn out by noon. Um, so first thing I do is I take my arms up and I try to put my elbows kind of behind my rib cage there to get a stretch. Cause you know, we're so forward with our instruments so take that back and then i hold it there just nothing too crazy it's the morning you don't want to like hurt yourself or anything and then i just look to my right center left center do this a couple times center left then i look up center down center up center down. And then I tilt. Right, center, left, center. Right, center, left, center. For me, I hold most of my tension is in my neck and my shoulders. So I spend probably the majority of the time on my neck and shoulders. And, you know, when I'm like resting or something, I'll be like turning my head just to keep everything loose, just to keep everything in check. Um, when I'm warming up, I'm mostly just assessing my tension and like my tendencies um, for the day. I like sometimes, you know, my colleagues make fun of me because I'll pick up my flute, I'll play through notes, and I'm like, oh God, this it's going to be that kind of day. You know, <laughs> so that's what my warm up's for. So, next thing I do is um, forearms. So I hold my hands out, exp extend them. You don't want any pain or anything, but extend them pretty far. And then. I pull, do the good old fashioned tug, nothing too crazy. Just warming up here. Other hand, tug, tug, tug. It's so weird, I can't see anybody. So it's like, 
I'm an only child, so I do talk to myself. So that's kind of what it feels like right now. <laughs> We're here, Abney. We're here. I, <laughs> I figured somebody would let me know if you if you weren't. Okay. Yeah. And Ashley, yeah. as we as we stretch, I just want to mention one little thing that today's session is being recorded for archival purposes. And um, also, Ebs, I, I, since you can't see anyone, I just want to give a quick shout out to Lori Sokoloff, who is joining us. Oh. So I love Lori. We miss you. OK, sorry. Continue. No problem. So now fingers down. And for me, I, I feel like I get a better stretch if I do a fist when I have my fingers pointed down. Just do a gen gentle tug. Tug. We all know how to stretch. Okay, one more. Tug. Tug. Okay, and then the last forearm stretch I do, so I hold my hands out, and then I just rotate out, and then in. Out. In. And then fingers down, just do out. And it's a little sample of some stretches that I do. <clears throat> so whenever I warm up on piccolo, I 97% of the time start out on flute. And I also don't start out on long tones. I don't know if that's weird, but for me, it's equivalent to like when I wake up in the morning and someone's telling me to sing. When I wake up in the morning, I full on sound like a man for like a good hour before I wake up. <laughs> so I kind of feel that way with long tones. So we're going to do some like slow scales and we're actually going to do them on the flute i always start my warm-ups on flute and then i end my warm-ups on flute sort of like a brass warm down i'll warm down on the flute just to make sure i'm keeping everything open and i've got ranges for both instruments okay so grab your flute sorry those of you who don't have it with you i'm sure it's nearby okay and this is an exercise from um Patricia George's uh, The Flute Scale Book. I love this book um, just because sometimes scales can get a little monotonous like because we have to do them every day. And this one, it just makes me have to think a little bit. So I'm going to walk you through this. We'll just do maybe two keys because I want to make sure that I get through everything with all of this talking I have to do. So what it is, is you're going to slur a one octave scale and then you go to the second degree of the scale, stay in the key and slur an octave, so on and so forth. So let's go through it slowly because this is the first time we have our flute up to our face for the day. Okay. So we'll do uh, with an eighth note on the beat. One E and a two E and a three E and nice and slow. Okay. Ready? Two, here we go. We'll just stay on version one, actually. Yeah, thank you. But there, as you can see, there are many different versions and you can change them up. So if you can, yeah, we'll just stay right there. Awesome. Okay, now we're going to just go a little bit faster. Again, we're just kind of waking up the fingers, getting some air into the instrument, blowing, assessing how tense we are for the day. So we'll go a little faster now. Here we go. One, two, here we go.
sorry about that bobble. I think a bird may have committed suicide. And <laughs> I don't know if you heard it on the, 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 the camera, but it just ran into the window. Hope it's okay. All right. So now let's just do one other key. Um, I do various speeds with this if I'm having you know, kind of a tense day, or I really feel like I'm, you know, really need to get air going through the flute, I'll only do them slow. Other times I'll do them really fast, kind of just depends on how much time I have, how I'm feeling. So let's do one more key, just because I want you to be able to kind of transpose and, and think and wake up a little bit. Okay, so let's do the key of B flat. Okay, so we'll go nice and slow again. One E and a two E and a, oh, there goes another bird. I don't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Ready, here we go. I think it's a little funny, little ironic. This, um, she calls this the rest in peace, and some birds are literally committing suicide at my window right now. It's fine. I, I'm not gonna blame myself for that, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So now let's do one a little faster, and then we'll move on. So one e and a two e and a three e and here we go. One, two. Here we go. So that's just kind of um, a way I can kind of get my fingers moving and everything. If I'm feeling really adventurous, I'll do them in like the minor keys and all of that stuff. Okay, so everybody grab your piccolo. But first off, grab an earplug. Hearing health is so important. I'm one of those people I'm super paranoid about my hearing. I wear earplugs at the movie theater. I wear them at the gym. I have a little spare part on my keychain in case I'm out in public and things get too loud. I have no shame, too. I'll wear those bright orange ones. I don't even care. So at least put an earplug on the right. Okay. All right. So um, the next thing we're going to do is from one of my favorite method books, um, Vade Mecum by Kujala. I could seriously talk about this book <clears throat> for an hour in itself, an hour session. And, you know, I have so many friends. I'm like, do you do Vade Makeum? They're like, no, I don't understand it. I'm like, we could do it together. So if anybody has any Vade Makeum questions, I'm here for it because I love this book. It's probably the book I refer to the most. Um, but I like this exercise because um, on Piccolo, you get to start on like an easy register. Um, I always tell my students, I'm like, any issues you have on the piccolo are just issues you have on the flute, but exacerbated. You may not realize you have those issues on the flute because you can hide a little bit more on the flute. But the piccolo, as we all know, is extremely unforgiving. So I do this exercise with a metronome and a tuner. Obviously, this is the first we're playing for the day. So it's not going to, you know, necessarily, you're not going to really be in tune, but you can usually tell your tendencies almost immediately, or at least I can. Um, when I play piccolo, I like to keep sort of my right hand a little forward just to keep any tension off of my face. Um, so we're gonna do this with the, the metronome and do vibrato, follow the dynamics. We'll only, we'll stop right before D, again, just to save time, but I kind of just do, I do these until I feel adequate we'll say okay so i'm going to turn the metronome on 
Hopefully that's loud enough. I picked my loudest metronome. And let's do, we'll take a little pause between each letter just so people can, you know, situate themselves. Okay, here we go. One, two, here we go. So since that's the first we've done piccolo for the day, it's like, you know, take a second if you need to readjust, if you need to put on or take off your chapstick. Okay, here's letter B. One, two, here we go. So again, resituate yourself if you need to stretch a little bit, if you're, if it sounds really tense, okay? This is our last line. We're going to do this, okay? Letter C. One, two, here we go. So that's a little taste of sort of like the long tones and the tone exercises I like to start off with. I mean, this is, this is you know, obviously in the flute method book, but it works so well um, with piccolo. And just to talk about sort of the relationship between the two, you know, I was talking about how, you know, if you're having issues with your high notes or you're cracking a lot, you're probably doing that on flute too. You just don't realize it. Um, but I will say, you know, flute and piccolo go hand in hand. So you got to make sure if you're a piccolo player, you keep your flute chops up. Um, I have a theory and I think I'm right, but if you listen to any of the top piccolo players in the orchestras here, and some of them are here today, they're also incredible flutists too. They really are. So it's like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm terrible at piccolo. And I'm like, well, I don't know. So we'll see. All right. Anyway, moving along, because I don't want to like run out of time because I have so much to say. Um, we're going on to... Um, an intonation and flexibility exercise. And I love this exercise because um, I think a lot of times as piccolo players, where we go wrong is only practicing with like a tuner and the needle lining up. And the first way to upset your colleagues is <laughs> if something's out of tune in rehearsal and you're like, well, I lined up with the tuner, like no one cares. Um, also, we're the highest pitched instrument. So it does not matter if you're playing at A442 or A441. If the trumpets are riding high, you have to match it because you're going to get blamed because you're on the top. So I think it's really nice to train your ear and not just like look at a tuner to really listen. So I love this exercise. I, I put a little bracket because A, I don't want to like burst people's speakers or their eardrums. Um, so we're just gonna do like an octave of it, but I would go through um, probably to like the high C, high B, just kind of depending on like how I feel. And I do this with all different dynamics. So what I do is I use a drone. Um, for those of you who use tonal energy, if you've got your phone around you or your uh, smart device, um, take that out. For those of you who don't know what tonal energy is, it is the best $4 you will ever spend. It's a metronome and a tuner app. It looks like this, okay? And the reason I like it is because um, you can sustain drones. You can do so much with drones. Um, for this exercise, I actually put it on piccolo just for now, but like say, you know, I've got some crazy solo in opera with like bassoon. I'll put the drones on bassoon for the day just so I can kind of get close to hearing that timbre. Because you know, as timbres change, sometimes it's hard to match pitch. So what I do 
is I hit the sustain button for those of you who have your tonal energy, or we can just use mine because I'll turn it up as loud as possible. And I put it on a C, okay? But I'll turn it off while I'm talking. And what I do is I go really slow up and down the interval. So I put it on the pedal tone, the tonic. So the, the, the drone is on a C. And um, I go slowly, because as you know, when we change intervals, we don't always return exactly to the same pitch on our tonic. So again, this is a great, great, great ear training exercise. So the first time I do it, I just do like a nice, comfortable dynamic, whatever. You could do vibrato, it doesn't matter. So we're just gonna go one note at a time, like one, two, three, four, nice and slow, and see if you can return to the same C every time, okay? And of course, we're just gonna stop at the C above the staff. Here we go. One, two, here we go. So if you notice, I missed a couple of them too, but that's okay. That's why we're warming up, okay? Then I pick various dynamics. We'll just do maybe two or three more, again, just to get through more exercises. Um, one that I always make sure I do is piano because um, I think the secret to really amazing piccolo players is how soft, not just soft, but soft and in tune they can play. Everybody can play loud. You know, you go to these auditions or you go to the exhibit halls at like NFA or these flute things and people are like, wah, wah, like not impressed. And what does that do? Nothing. But it, you know, when people can play super soft on the piccolo, it's like the most amazing thing ever, okay? All right, so how about this time, let's do um, piano the whole time, okay? Here we go. One. Two, here we go. I may have forgotten to say, this is from De La Sonorte. I'm sure most people probably recognize it, but I do want to throw that out there. This is from De La Sonorte, which we all know and love. Okay, maybe let's do one more. How about this? Let's do where I've written number five. So now we're going to start out forte, and by the time we get to the end, we're going to be piano. Okay. One, two, here we go. A lot of times I will repeat these, you know, if they don't go as well as I want them to. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to get everything situated, but I love this exercise. You can make up your own dynamics. You can do one triplet forte, the next one piano. You can do whatever you want, but it's so, so, so great for your ears. Okay, let's keep moving. Um, the next one I'm kind of excited to share because I feel like some people don't know about this book. Um, this is from the Mazzanti Method, Daily Exercise for Piccolo. This is such a great book. It's just so fun. And I think the exercises are written so well for the piccolo. 
Um, notice I'm not doing anything too crazy high, you know, especially if you're going to have a full day of like piccolo and orchestra, like your high notes are going to come out just fine. But we'll, we'll do a little bit higher notes towards the end. But um, we're going to do this sing and play exercise. I love singing and playing on piccolo and I love uh, actually flutter tonguing on piccolo. It just helps you kind of assess how tight your face is and neither one of those things will be executed properly if there's any tension in your face. So these are all kind of like, this is all like one big giant diagnosis, you know what I mean? Okay, so what you're gonna do, I happen to have a quite a deep voice, but you can kind of pick what whatever octave you want. I envy those people who can sing really high, not me. Um, so we're gonna use our voice as the pedal tone. So you're gonna sing a D and then we're gonna play this arpeggio. So you'll notice halfway through measure two, we stop singing. And I love when I get there because I feel so like free and open. So let's just all get our voice and the low D going. So for people who have a hard time singing and playing, or if you're younger, a beginner, or <coughs> um, excuse me, what I tell people is basically it's singing and blowing at the same time, you know, which is a little bit awkward, but that's all it is. You know, some of my students, you know, they're like squeezing their butt cheeks, like trying to get all this stuff to come out. Just relax and blow, okay? So let's all do our little test note, okay? So... <laughs> I kind of think of it as like kind of blowing like warmer air because if you think about blowing warmer air you automatically relax your throat relaxes your face relaxes everything relaxes so think about blowing warm air and this is a good way to loosen up the sinuses and it's actually going to help out your high register immensely okay so we're going to go quite slow because some people haven't done this exercise before so take a breath whenever you need to it's not really about that okay here we go we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here we go. Ready, go. Don't you feel nice and open by the time you get to the non-singing part? I love it, I love it. Okay, so let's take a second and we're gonna do the next line, okay? So we get our E flats going on. Okay, ready? One, two, next line, here we go. <laughs> I love this particular sing and play exercise because a lot of times the sing and play, you'll sing the pitch you're playing, but it, it takes a little extra thought to keep on the pedal tone, okay? Um, let's see, how are we doing on time? We'll do one more. Let's do E natural, okay? Here we go. Four, five, six. <laughs> And these go on and on for a while. I love these. I could do these all day. But again, I have so much to say. Let's move on just in case. I don't want to run out of time because I know people may have questions and stuff. So this is also in the Mazzanti book. And I like it just because it's a nice interval exercise. Again, just sort of keeping everything relaxed so that I can have a nice day without any tension. So what I do is I just go at a moderate speed, I add vibrato, but I'm just making sure. So a lot of times when people, uh, when we slur, especially on the piccolo, it's a smaller, less forgiving instrument, the intervals tend to be a little choppy. So this is a great exercise because I want you to think about in between the notes. The, the actual notes are gonna be beautiful, but make sure the transition, and that has to do with airspeed and kind of keeping your face relaxed. So what I like to do, I'll just do, let's see, um, 
we'll we'll do two lines. It, this won't take a lot of time. So the first time we're just gonna slur and have a good time, and then the next time we're gonna flutter, love flutter tugging on the piccolo. Okay, so we'll go about one and two and three and okay, here we go. Ready and go. Now we're going to flutter. Biggest thing with flutter, if people have a hard time flutter tonguing, is to stay relaxed. Let your air do most of the work, which kind of, I think that rule kind of pretty much applies to everything that has to do with flute and piccolo playing. So now we're going to flutter. You can use your throat, your tongue, whichever one you prefer. Ready, here we go. it so that's what I do in fact I don't want to run out of time so we'll just do the first line um but in the Mazzanti book there's like a full like lines and lines and lines of this stuff you know you could sit in the stairwell and do this all day okay so my last um piccolo exercise is a really important one um this is a great well all of these are great on flute but I actually definitely do something similar on flute so I use this as an articulation exercise. We're just gonna do the first line again because I don't wanna kill anybody's speakers or their eardrums or your babies or your dogs or whatever, okay? So what I do is I like to go from the most difficult articulation to the easiest because if you can do the most difficult articulation, by the time you get to the easy one, it's like a walk in a park, okay? So we're gonna do what my teacher, the great Helen Blackburn, for those of you who know her, um, calls gut puffs. So it's no tongue and it's just puffs of air okay so like like you're kind of coughing into the flute okay I usually do this at a pretty moderate speed um because I think you know it just helps assess my articulation for the day whether I'm going to be like cracking all day or whatever okay so we'll go slow though for people who haven't done this before so we'll do ha 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 gut puffs ready two here we go. Now, if you had problems getting any of those notes to speak, it's probably you're not using enough airspeed or if you're you're tensing up your throat, closing up your throat, or your tongue is coming up in the back. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, I do that as many times as I need to. Some days it's like, whew, rough. You know, I had like salty fries the night before or something and things aren't, aren't going well, you know, too much sodium in my face. Um, now we're going to do a K articulation or a G articulation, whichever one you use, okay? So now we're getting a little bit easier and easier and easier. So, ka, 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 ka. Here we go. Ready and go. So for me, I would do that K again because there were a couple notes that I didn't quite get the way I wanted to. But for time purposes, we're going to go to the T articulation or the D articulation, whichever one you use. There we go. One, two, here we go. sense then let's do one more um i would do the kata tucka and then i would do triple tonguing but let's just do we'll, we'll do a, a kata and a tucka so we're going to do the reverse double tongue really quick and still slow so we're not going to double the notes just kata kata i think that takes more control okay here we go 
One, two, ready and go. But not least, tucka. And we'll go a little faster because everybody should be familiar with this. Tucka, tucka, tuck. Two. Ready, go. And that is my piccolo warm up. So now, whether it's the end of a rehearsal, the end of a performance, or just when I get home at the end of the day, I like to warm down on flute, okay? Just simple, I just like to play something low to make sure that I still have this full range of flexibility. So, we're gonna go back to our Vade Mecum. You can take out your earplug if you want to. And let's just do one line, because we're probably nearing the end of time. Um, but I would, I would kind of hang out on this for like a minute or two, okay? So, we don't need a metronome, nothing. This is just to relax our face uh, at the end of the day, okay? So we'll do, well, I'll turn the metronome on because you guys are playing with me. So we'll go, we'll keep it at 72. We'll just do the first two lines, okay? Here we go. One, two, here we go. And that is our warm-up for the day. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Ed. You're most welcome. That was really fun. And I, I love the a Mazzanti vocalese exercise. That is our favorite exercise here at Burkhart. It's it's so, so melodic. It? Yeah, yeah, it's so beautiful. And yeah, we love it. And it doesn't hurt your ear. <laughs> exactly. So at this point, Dan, uh, do we have any questions in the chat room? Um, I think we answered a few of them, but Ebony, if you can walk us again, just one more time through what each of those came from, what book or what collection of exercises? Yes, yes. Just so we make sure that everybody's got those. Yes, I, I actually pulled them all out just in case. Um, Perfect. This, I think this is like an old version. So I think it doesn't, it's yellow now. But um, so the scale book is where I got the octave scale rips from. Okay. It's yellow. It doesn't look like this. And I think, I think at all the flute places, they're having like a, a bundle sale because um, there's one called The Art of Chunking that I love. There's a vibrato one people use. So these are really, really great books. It's yellow. It's not going to look like this. So that's that. This is my, oh, oh my God, I almost dropped my flute. Um, this is uh, Vade Mecum. This is the second edition. There's an earlier edition, but I like this um, edition because there you, there's like a little schedule you can follow. I mean, I seriously, I could talk about this for an hour. Everybody go get it. It looks expensive. It's like 20 something bucks for a hardcover, okay? So this is Vade Mecum by Kujala, the second edition. And then we've got De La Sonorte, which we all know what that is, right? Yeah. Okay, and then this is the Mazzanti. Yeah. And I You're think Ethan is muted. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You know, this Zoom thing, you think I know. after all these, right? I would get it. But I just want to say, Pat is in the room with us. Pat George is in the room. So <gasps> Ed, if you want No way, I love your books. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
Yeah. What else do we have, Daniel? Uh, that was the biggest question. I wonder, Ebony, can you talk a little bit more about how flute is, or how piccolo rather, is different from flute? What do you know? Because you teach a lot. What do you notice are the tendencies with students? Um, again, I feel like um, they're they're very very similar. Um, it's just that the piccolo, you know, so it's so much smaller, kind of like intonation. If you're ten cents sharp, you have to move like like that much. So everything is extremely like um, exaggerated. So, you know, I, I'll have a student come and be like, oh, I can't play any high notes, you know? And I'm like, it's probably because you're forcing them out on the flute, but you just don't realize it because y y you can't tell as much. So I would say it's actually quite, quite, quite similar. You just have to be way more refined with your technique on the piccolo. Fantastic, fantastic. We do have another question from Ada, from Dr. Jones. Um, she's asking about vibrato differences, speed, width. What do you? What are your thoughts on on those things? That's a great question. So um, I try not to uh, vibrate too slowly on the piccolo because then it kind of sounds a little wobbly. So you know, you have this theory. It's like there's like narrow, wide, loud, soft. So I take the um, ratio. Actually, um, who was it? Somebody told me about some vibrato exercises that Jim actually does. And there's like a, you know, he has kind of a chart um, that talks about like different speeds. So you kind of have to use your ear. If you're playing really loud and high, you don't want slow. And then if you, if you're playing super low, you don't want, you, you know, you don't want too fast and like vice versa and all that stuff. So um, actually the Vade Mecum exercise, I really love to use as a vibrato exercise too, because you've got all those crescendos in there and you can experiment with how fast or slow you want your vibrato to carry along the dynamics, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is Wonderful. your favorite orchestral excerpt? Ooh, do people have a favorite orchestral excerpt? <laughs> on the piccolo, on the piccolo. Uh, ugh. Um... I actually really enjoy Damnation of Faust, Berlioz, because it's just like a bat out of hell. You know what I mean? You just get to have like lots of fun. But um, yeah, probably that or maybe like Mother Goose, just because Mother Goose is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, as a second flutist of an opera company, like I imagine you would have to switch your instruments quite often. How do you eventually become comfortable in switching? Uh, that's a great question. So I actually do this a lot, and I actually do it when I'm preparing for auditions because sometimes I have a I have trouble with it. Like um, sometimes in opera, I'll be sitting for forty five minutes, and it'll be like you know some string interlude before, so it's not even like I can like test out a note or whatever. And then you have to come in on like a pianissimo high A flat, and the conductor's like, "You're too loud," and I'm like, "You would have said that no matter how soft I play that anyway." But actually, what I do is I actually practice picking up my piccolo cold. So a lot of times I just try to have as much muscle memory as possible to where I can just be like, "Bam." Um, so that's like worst case scenario. So then if I do have the chance to like, doo, 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 you know toot a little bit before I have to come in on some crazy note, then I can do it. So I would say having that muscle memory and just picking up my instrument cold. I mean, don't do it a lot. You're going to like injure yourself or something. But um, yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, you want to take the next question? I do. We have a question from Catherine Ramirez. Hi, Catherine. Um, she's asking about your audition for Dallas Opera. What was it like? And actually, I know, Ebony, since you've taken a lot of auditions yes. and won a lot of auditions, just tell us about maybe the whole audition experience. Um, as like far as Piccolo or just kind of in general? Let's keep that question general. Okay. Whew. Um, so it takes, it takes a lot of, I don't even want to say practice, but a lot of refining. Whenever I'm preparing for an audition, I like to assume worst case scenarios, you know, like I've shown up at, um, I won't name this, I won't name the orchestra. It's not that anybody here is associated with any of these people, but um, I, I took an audition once where um, it was a semifinal round and you have to, sh we showed up and they're like, you're gonna show up, we're all gonna wait at the security desk and then you'll have an hour 
to warm up. And it was like snowing. You know, I'm from Texas. I don't do snow, you know? So I'm freezing. I hadn't even changed out of my like snow shoes. And I drew number one. And I literally, literally take off my snowshoes, put on like my heels, and I like take off like one latch of my case and someone's like, ready? And I was like, excuse me, what? And of course, like ignorance, I was like young. I mean, I should have said something, but I was like, um, I haven't even, t I thought I was going to have an hour. And they're like, don't worry, because you have a warm up room and then a lot of times they'll take you to like, I call it the holding cell. <laughs> It's like jail. Um, they take you to another room before you go on stage. So the person was like, you will be able to warm up there. And that was a lie. And so I went out on a semifinal round for like a major, major orchestra not having warmed up. So I like to imagine like worst case scenarios. I A, I should have said something. And B, it's kind of where that like practicing cold comes into play. Um, but other than that, I try to learn the entire symphony or like all the major chunks of opera. I do a lot of um, drones. I do a lot of mock auditions. Um, the, the Dallas opera audition was probably one of the most nerve wracking because it's my hometown. So I was extremely nervous, extremely nervous. So, and I knew that that was gonna be happening. So I made sure to do a lot of um, mock auditions. And I also like to assimilate like uh, my nerves. Cause for me, the first thing that goes when I get nervous is like, I can't even hold a note for like two counts. So I would have my friends make me like run around the block and then I come back in and like do a couple deep breaths and like start the excerpts. So, cause you know, it's like one of those things where people are like, don't be nervous. It's like telling me not to cry. Like I'm still going to cry, you know? So I just try to like embrace my nerves and learn how to like work through them than trying to like get rid of them. Cause that's just like not going to happen. So, I mean, I could talk about that forever. I know that didn't really cover everything, but just some highlights. But don't worry, I think, you know, um, last last week we had uh, uh, our session with Ada and she studied with Mariano back in Eastman. And I know you also studied with one of the flute legends, Fenwick Smith, who, you know, I think- studied with Mariano, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think, again, one day we're gonna have a sit down and talk about all these legendary teachers that yeah. because especially, I think it's just for the enrichment of the younger generation. Absolutely. Um, but I think we are at the end of, today's session, uh, if we don't have any more questions. Uh, once again, Ebony, thank you so much. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> what are your tips for finding out about upcoming auditions? Oh yeah, how do, you, how do players get informed about auditions that are available? Um, so the, the fastest, easiest way is most professionals or young professionals are in some type of a musician's union. And at the beginning of every month, they send out a newsletter. Now you can check it online. I, I like never, I never read that paper. Um, you can check online and you, you can type in flute and all the auditions will come up. But if you're not a member of the union, um, musical chairs, what is it? Musicalchairs.info, mm. I think we'll post all of them on there. So that's probably the two fastest ways to find them. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, Thank you everyone again for joining us today. And Ebony, thank you so much for your friendship. You're amazing. I love you. Good to see you. And everybody take care, uh, be well, stay healthy. And then next week is our final warm up with Burkhardt featuring Anthony Triumpho, uh, winner of the YCA competition. So that should be a very fun session. Please join us next week and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye everybody. Thank you.